we, uh, I don't have a crazy agenda for this particular, what? You can start it over. I can start it over. Now we have audio. Well, welcome back to another T-Rex talk. Uh, today we are going to have a riveting time talking about nylon, slings, uh, things made in China, uh, possibly in Mexico, and uh, other things like that. Yeah, no audio. Um, <laughs> technical difficulties, but we're good now. We're good now. Uh, I actually have some boxes to open because I just got back to um, here to the facility from shooting today and getting rained on. Uh, we got some cool stuff, uh, some com communication, comms, and some stuff like that content that we are working on today uh, that I'll, uh, hopefully we'll be able to edit up and get some of that out this following week, uh, maybe this weekend as well, uh, on our social medias. If you don't follow T-Rex Arms and my personal Instagram as well, uh, on Instagram, that's where a lot of our content goes throughout the week because YouTube, that's, you know, we're not doing YouTube every week except for this. Um, but we do publish things on Instagram all the time. Uh, longer videos, shorter videos, more casual stuff, kit, gear, cool pictures, stuff like that uh, to get you through your, you know, mundane job at work to make hard-earned American dollars. Um, you can follow us at Lucas Trex Arms and Trex Arms uh, on Instagram. Shameless plug. Uh, but, so what I did want to talk about on this live because there's always a lot of questions when I talk about gear uh, in general or plate carriers or whatever. Uh, I can never get to very many of them. Uh, but I'm actually hoping on this one, because I got my phone out. I love it when people are like, get off your phone. Don't be on a phone during a live. Like, no, this is how I see you all. And I can watch myself, but I, I won't. I'm going to pause that. But I can actually see what you guys are asking, and we can try to get into it. I also have a bunch of gear back here, some plate carrier loadouts, some belts, chest rigs, things I've bought on eBay. This box from a pretty cool vendor, actually, that we're actually, uh, we're going to open up here in a, in a little bit, a little bit. And uh, I just got a plate carrier uh, on eBay as well. Well, uh, again, getting into that in a little bit. So you have to stay here and watch. Uh, no, I'm not hyped up by the rain. I'm hyped up by an awesome meeting we just had. Came back straight from the range, getting poured on, shooting, slaying targets, straight to a meeting, slayed that meeting, into here, slay this live. It's good, you know? It's great. I hope I slay this live. We'll see. So let's talk. Let's answer some questions on nylon or kit or gear, whatever you guys got. Um, where are you getting Ranger Green Cry Imbabs? Uh, OP Tactical has been selling Imbabs now for I think about a year. Uh, they've also been on eBay at exorbitant prices, but you can find Imbabs all over the place. Cry kind of opened them up. It was a plate carrier they originally designed. It, a lot of them went to Marsoc, but it was also for other people in SOCOM. Um, you know, they're hard to get. I paid like $700 for my Ranger Green one a few years ago, back when you couldn't really get them uh, as easily. Uh, but they're easier to buy now. And you can even buy the Cummerbunds. Uh, I bought one of those, threw it onto an AC-1, and uh, it has two radio pouches, side plate pouches, which I've used with side armor, and uh, that can attach straight to the AC-1. It's super awesome. So they're all over the place now. Do I collect camouflages? No, I don't. Uh, I'm not really into uh, camo gear um, to wear it my gravel range in Tennessee, uh, I wear the same jeans every week. I don't, you know, put on fancy camo to shoot. Uh, now, we are hoping here in the future of actually doing content more in the woods um, and actually going out, and so that'll be a little different. Camouflage will be a little more important, um, you know, with some of the content, some of the training stuff we want to do out there, some different drills and whatnot. Uh, but for normal flat range stuff, like, you don't need... I. I understand people want to put on their cry pants they spent $300 on and get their money's worth out when they go to the range, like I get, or the indoor range, like I understand. But you don't have to have that. You can wear sneakers and jeans on the flat range, especially if you never do movement drills to begin with. And you just stand there and shoot. I don't need to wear my Hawaiian shirt and my $800 Gucci cry pants to stand there and never move a muscle and shoot. If it makes me happy, though, go, go for it. It's great. But you don't have to have it. Just wear your jeans. Wear your, your I don't say flip-flops because you'll trip and die on your own toes. Um, thoughts on Arctis gear and camo. So Arctis is a company in the UK that makes some pretty cool stuff. Uh, a guy, chap, sent me a plate carrier from that, or a chest rig from them a while ago in the, what's it called, DP, DPM camo, the British camouflage. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, they make some cool low-vis gears, actually the coolest thing that they make. Uh, they also have some you know, more overt stuff that I believe is still being used. But the fact of the matter is, Cry Precision, it's used by a lot of NATO people, special operations all over the world. It's not just an American entity. Um, you'll see SAS guys wearing Cry stuff. You know, they don't just use stuff from their own country. 
uh, vans on the range. Yeah, lots of people do that. It's turned into like a fad. Uh, that's for sure. Little thing. Uh, LA Police Gear plates. I'm not super knowledgeable on the plates that LA Police Gear is offering. Um, I'm sure there's people out there who've talked about them, who've studied armor, like really, you know, exhaustively that have looked into those and some of the other ones. I'd like to learn more about those and RMAs and stuff like that. Uh, there's other people here in the company that do more research on that than I do. I shoot. I pull triggers. I don't, you know. Yeah. So, favorite slings. So, I have used a lot of slings. I need a sling. Drew, would you mind grabbing? Just off of that ACOG 16-inch gun. Uh, there's a lot of good slings out there. Provided you have a sling that, in my opinion, it should be adjustable. There's no reason not to have a sling that's adjustable where I can modify the tightness of the sling with the weapon on my body. As long as you have a good adjustable sling from a company, you're good to go. Every sling will have its, thank you, its little nuances. Some slings have huge pads. Some don't. Uh, some have built-in QDs that are sewn in or have clasps that you know you hook straight to the gun that are like hard sewn in but as long as you have a sling that is adjustable in some way so you can make it tighter and looser to your body it doesn't really matter that much which sling you get the sling is just great spiritus has one we've got one haley's got one vickers has one uh, uh kyle ann has one uh every other company out there small companies they all make an adjustable sling some still make traditional slings that aren't adjustable. That's just like one piece of webbing. But get an adjustable sling. And don't run it in a single point. I don't recommend a single point unless you're using like a sub gun. So our sling, after I used a lot of different slings out there, I was like, you know what? I want a sling that has very minimal hardware, a very minimal pull tab. Because some of the pull tabs out on the market, they're big in metal. And the reason I wanted something that was super minimal is I wanted a sling that I could fold up on the gun, so I'm not, I'm not gonna bring a gun out, I can't, yeah. <laughs> I know, I was thinking that. But I wanted a sling that I could fold up on the gun and still operate the weapon without the sling being deployed. And the best way for that is to have thin hardware, uh, thin, you know, a very thin pull tab. Also in included with the sling are our little uh, shot cord, little uh, retainers, so you can actually keep the sling to the weapon. Uh, there's a couple things we did because I wanted to optimize a sling for actually keeping on the gun at all times. So it's not constantly, you know, loose in the car and snags on something when you go to grab it. Uh, I wanted something I could stow on the weapon. Uh, the other thing is I wanted a minimal pad. I didn't want a pad that was so big it would catch on all of your kit. Uh, I wanted something that was a little more comfortable, you know, if I've got obviously like a heavier rifle. Um, I've had a couple slings out there that were just raw webbing that on a pistol transition have actually cut my neck open. Um, which, you know, then you're like, be a man, cut your neck open. Like, sure. But, um, yeah, let the sling cut your neck, be a man. Like, I get it, I understand. But uh, not great, you know, when you're transitioning to your pistol real fast and as you, you know, push the gun to your side, it just, you know, goes right through. Um, so I wanted something that had, you know, binding. It wasn't just the hard edge of the webbing, had a little bit of pad. And um, this is what, you know, uh, has resulted in. Uh, Derek, who's our nylon R&D guy, he had a bunch of this already figured out when he came on board. A couple little adjustments were made, and that's the sling right here. Uh, we used to sell the slings here from Ferro Concepts, another good sling. I've used Spiritus' sling, good sling, although the metal uh, little tightener, thingy adjusters a little big in my opinion uh haley has a cool slang although the pad's really stiff um every company has their own like little nuances pros and cons uh just make sure you get an adjustable sling from us or someone else i don't care get one you can adjust you get it tight to the body when you stow the rifle loose so you can actually shoot and do things um so to your arm sling that was loud all right back to the questions oh shoot come back um, all right, what's the progress on the Orion belts? We've had a bunch of Orions in stock now for, I want to say months. I'm sure some colors, they deviate, you know, they deviate based on, you know, I don't know if that's the right word, based on stock, like Ranger Green is now the most popular color, which I totally understand because it's awesome. Um, so I don't know. Uh, would you like to get some German issued gear? I would love that. I would love that. Yes. I love getting gear from other countries and seeing what's going on. In fact, I think now is the time to open this. But first, let me let me check through some of these and see if there's any really fast ones I can get through. Why Ranger Green when Multicam Tropic exists? Uh, 
very simple. If I have to wear Ranger Green in public, which I have done before, uh, back during, uh, there was a season of various activities that were occurring in cities across America. Uh, we went to one of our local towns with a guy who had connections and had some places he was protecting. We wore our kit. We had all of our stuff. Cops knew what we were doing. It was all kosher. Uh, Ranger Green looks nice and official and professional. Camouflage looks really militaristic. That's kind of camouflage is generally used by militaries for military type stuff. When you're running around with camouflage in the populace, that doesn't always um, demonstrate uh, certain things that are good, certain vibes. Uh, so yeah, Multicam Tropic exists, but it's a camouflage. It looks like a camouflage. Uh, if you're trying to wear that with denim, with button-down shirts, regular stuff, trying to look like a, you know, a normal citizen, a professional citizen, um, Ranger Green is just more professional in an urban type of situation than wearing camo, even if the camo is a similar color. That's why I don't really do multicam because most stuff happening these days, look at what's going on in certain places up north, it's in the city. You don't really have these things happening in the country. I don't have stuff in my county, you know, these types of activities occurring in my county in the woods. Don't have that. Now that's something that could be different. You know, that could be, you know, people pair dropping, you know, over our mainland and, you know, war, you know, whatever. Uh, then stuff's in the woods. But right now, everything's urban. Literally everything's urban. Uh, the majority of counter-terror stuff happening in Europe, it's all urban. Um, so it's, you know, when you're selecting your gear, choosing your stuff, you know, there's a time and a place to choose it for the woods, but most stuff nowadays is happening in an urban setting. It's definitely something to think about. Camo versus solid colors, gray, green. Gray and green, it's great. Blends with a lot more stuff, and it doesn't look super militaristic. So it's great from a community, um, hearts and minds kind of, a, kind of a situation, which you do need to think about. So let's open up this box. I think, uh, I'm not sure if the camera angle, so I'll, oh, yeah, there we go. We're good. All right, so this is a company. Um, they're based in Australia. Uh, this company is called SORD, S-O-R-D, uh, Special Operations Research Development, maybe? I, I actually don't know what this stands for. Um, they make some really cool stuff. I, I stumbled over to their site uh, a few days, like, I don't know, four or five days ago. They have a U.S.-based retailer, and they have this really cool... Uh, colorway called SBC. It's basically, you know, khaki, uh, like traditional. It's not like, it's like the, the yellower khaki. It's not coyote brown. It's not coyote brown. It's this khaki color and they're super cheap. It's like they're getting rid of it. So like these pouches are like 10 bucks, right? And uh, I thought, you know what? I want to get more khaki gear. I want to solidify some of the stuff we have here in the armory, have some of this, you know, tan colors. So I went and bought a bunch. So uh, rifle pouch, standard Molly, pretty cool. They were like 10 bucks. GPS pouch, $6. Put this on a war belt. You put a GPS in there or whatever I want. A uh, little radio pouch. This will fit our, you know, high terras or whatever. I think it was like $10. Uh, the, okay, these are these are cool. I bought two of them. Uh, these are super rad. And I've never used these before. So this looks like their tourniquet carrier. Uh, so you can have this on your, your armor or on your belt. But it actually, it opens just like... A, uh, their tourniquet carrier is a dump pouch. So it's great for all your loot. Oh, I mean, all your things that you find. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's not the best dump pouch out there, but if you need to quickly like stow some stuff in it or off of your belt, uh, it folds up nice and small. Uh, I think these were like 20 bucks. It's really not that bad. Um, so starts in this, turns into that. It's one row of molly to attach. Um, I saw these on their site and was like, that's dope. I would love to have that. I'll put these on certain belts or on my plate carrier. You know, running it on my plate carrier right here. If I ever need to stow, you know, a bunch of extra stuff. A gas mask probably won't fit in there. It's a little too narrow. Um, but all kinds of stuff. So super dope. So two slim dump pouches. That's cool. Uh, 40 mic mic pouch. A little horizontal. In the SBC colorway. SBC colorway, just admin pouch. So this can go on a plate carrier. Got some elastic on the inside. I think this was like $18 or so. Really not that expensive. Okay, that wasn't supposed to be Coyote Brown, but this is Coyote Brown. Uh, khaki, two more rifle pouches. Nice, nice. So I can do triples. This is really old school too. This is very Aussie and old school, but it's cool. Because uh, it still works, you know? Like it, it works. 
Uh, flashlight pouches, these cost uh, also. Uh, they were not expensive, although it's open in the bottom. I guess if you have a large enough accessory, it won't fall through. And they did that to make it cheaper, you know, then I have to close it off. So I get it, because these were also like $10. It's just open in the bottom, but it gets tapered, and so it's probably fine. Um, this is kind of fun. So everyone now has, you know, dangler style pouches. I will say, based on my understanding of gear and kit and kind of how far we've come, Faro, I believe, was the first, or if not one of the first companies to make popular pouches that go here. I know Haley had one. He didn't really push it a whole lot. Um, it was kind of a box. It wasn't real, you know, there wasn't a lot of form to it. Uh, but Pharaoh came in with the dangler and it kind of like formed to your kit and kind of your body a little better. It, it had more aesthetic to it. And uh, now everyone makes these, uh, these styles of pouches that go underneath your plate carrier, give you more, you know, space to put things uh, without bulking out your kit. Uh, so I bought a pouch from Tier Tactical. They've got one. It's very similar to another company's. Uh, and Sword, they have some. They got a little one like this. They have a larger one. And they got a bunch of other ones. So, boom. Pretty cool. I could put uh, some Snickers in here. That's nice. Suppressor, yeah. I'll just keep it on the gun. I don't know. Um, oh, this is great. This is a, a belt. Now, this is quite traditional. SBC, of course. So I could build this out right now. But um, this was 30 bucks <laughs> with a buckle. I'm going to kit this out. I'm going to run a high power, and then this is going to be my Aussie clone, uh, my Aussie military clone, and I'll run my AUG. But uh, standard Molly, what is cool about this one is this is tapered, as you can see, to your body. It's not just a straight up flat like belt, but it is actually tapered, and it feels pretty good. Um, the only downside to this, well, the big one, is uh, there's no sort of non-slip material here. So as soon as you wear this, and this goes for any war belt, really, as soon as I crouch behind something or move around, the entire thing can go up and you're in trouble. Because uh, now it's not retained around your hips. But again, very cheap, and I thought, hey, why not? Another rifle pouch. Uh, uh, I can't remember what this is. Oh, this is a radio pouch uh, for the side of your uh, carrier. Goes underneath. Again, everyone makes these. Uh, little radio pouch, Velcro's underneath your carrier. This one's kind of cool because they use tweed material, which is a little stretchy and you know comfortable. And they actually have a pad on the inside, which most people don't do, but this is actually really important. Have that pad right there, so that hard radio. Especially if you have your cummerbund really tight, it doesn't just dig right into you. So that's actually super nice, really fun. Um, all right, then they had these. Okay, so this is the weird stuff. Uh, another grenade pouch. They have these backpacks, which this one was like $35, which, again, I don't know where they have this stuff made. It's possible Australia has different rules for berry compliance and foreign manufacture. I don't know. But it's like $35. Bucks. Um, and they called this the, uh, actually, no, this one is $50. The other one's $35. Um, this is like the Scavenger or something like that. Uh, super flat little pack. It's actually pretty cool and uh, in their SBC color. So I thought, wow, that's really cheap. I'll get one. Oh, they also have, this is kind of fun. The zippers have Velcro on the edges so you can Velcro all of them together. And that prevents the bag from ever opening because they're all like fused together. That's kind of fun. I don't know how useful that is, but hey, why not? It's kind of cool. Uh, opens up, you probably run your hydration there. Uh, there might be a hole here you can pop it through. I guess not. Uh, you could pop it through the top. Got some pockets, kind of cool, mesh padding on the inside. It was cheap, you know, wear it with a plate carrier, it's kind of fun. Uh, and then they had this one, which this is the one that's like 35, and they called this, I can't remember what they called this, but they advertised it as a backpack you could roll up into the size, I don't know how that's possible, basically into the size of a rifle pouch. Um, they got this thing tiny in their photo, um, and it's just this little expandable backpack uh, with very simple shoulder straps, you know, they're not padded and, um, yeah, you can just, you know, do stuffs with it. And it was like 35 bucks. And so I was like, why not? So that's all cool. That's all from, uh, sword USA slash sword Australia. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Let me go into the comments and we have this thing over here. We'll look at it's not OD. It's a, it, I'll show you. It's the sort of the marine khaki color. It's not federal khaki. It's kind of that yellowy, you know, sort of khaki color that was issued to uh, Marines uh, back in the early 2000s. All right. So I, I'm, I'm looking at this. Yeah, it was quite a big box. It was like 300 something bucks worth of worth of worth of stuff. 
Um, but we're going to use this for some things we're working on. And I love getting kit from other companies. It's good fun. Uh, is there a time frame on the training video? Yeah, for those of you that don't know here on YouTube, I uh, recently filmed a three out, well, Chad, where did it start as before you got in? Was it like five? Because it was four and a half when you gave it to me. So it's five and a half hours of, of B-roll B slash teaching. Uh, just a single day rifle class like I do for people that I've uh, been able to train in the past. We got 10 of our employees out and I taught rifle. We had two cameras, Charles and Chad. They're both in here running the live. And uh, they ran around. I was mic'd up and we filmed rifle, rifle one, basic rifle, right? Uh, calling shots, recoil control stance, movement stuff. Uh, pretty simple and the plan is we're going to do more of these, and they will be found exclusively on T-Rex Arms for free. They will not be here on YouTube. They will be on our website, uh, viewable at any time with, you know, the segments chaptered out and some other stuff and pictures of the guns that were used and the students' guns and what they have and blah, 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 and all that good stuff. Um, so we're building that out, and uh, I'm actually going through the edit right now. Chad, when Chad uh, turned it over to me, it was four and a half hours. I've trimmed it down to, I think, four hours. I'm trying to trim it down to about three and a half. There's just like extra B-roll and just stuff of, you know, students shooting and whatnot that we're just cleaning up. Maybe add some music. I'm not sure yet how we're going to do it. But it's just long. It's just, it's the class. It's like if you were there. It's the class minus the one-on-one -on -one you get. So it's going to be on our website for free. Not sure exactly when it's going up. It should be in the next month or so. Um, that'll have its own section on our website, uh, viewable at any time. Just go over there before you go to the range, like, oh yeah, I want to work on reloads. Uh, I'm going to watch that segment on reloading a rifle. Uh, malfunctions, I'm going to go watch that. Um, recoil control or calling my shots. I want to work on calling my shots. What was the drill they did again for working on that? This, okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to call my number, walk up, check it, go back, you know, 50 meters, 40 meters. Uh, you'll be able to check that out. So super cool, super cool. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting it out to you guys, and it'll be free. So, hey, if you want to support our company, you can support us by buying product, um, but I'm not charging for, that, for uh, the class stuff. No music. I like it. I'm a man of culture. Yeah, music, emotion. <laughs> Let's get that out of here. Um, no, no emotions ever, right? This needs to be equilibrium at all times. Uh, we also need full auto Berettas with magnetic magazines. I agree. Uh, no paintings. No, nothing like that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Shaw Concepts. Shaw Concepts is creating some really cool stuff. I also, the thing I appreciate most about him, he has, I just follow his Instagram, is he does, and this is exactly what manufacturers need to do. This is what we've been doing for a long time, and it, it works, it's great. Educate people on the item, or a type of item, or a, a principle surrounding the item. So he did one recently on upside down magazines. Um, he doesn't make, to my knowledge, a mag carrier to be used upside down, so he was using another company's. And he said, here's the deal with upside down magazines on belts. If it's an open top mag pouch, their tension's not good enough. The technology, unless you use like a traditional pouch, probably isn't there. It gives you some benefits. It's better with like certain kinds of kit. Um, and I read that and was like, that's a great write-up. He's not selling his own product with this write-up. He's educating people on this thing that people ask about. And after I read it, I went, I'm going to go do that myself. And I filmed some today with it. Because, um, again, I want to educate people on what this looks like. And after I read his thing, I thought, you know, because he said no open top. And I agree. So this is a uh, Ronin belt, two-piece belt. I took one of my Cry uh, Smart Suite pouches, flipped it upside down. It has active retention. It has a flap. And that is what I use for uh, my rifle reload. And as you can see, and I did some today, they were pretty quick, pretty, pretty... I don't want to say effortless, but they actually weren't too bad. But what this does is, rather than this whole magazine standing all the way up to, let's see, here, about here, I now drop all of this down. So if I'm wearing a plate carrier with side plates, radios, a bunch of stuff on the side of my carrier, I don't have this mag jabbing me the entire time, but it's still there for ready access. Um, so if I were to actually do this, which I might play with this more in the future, leave this set up, run it with some, my heavy, I'm building out a JPC with side armor and groin protector, like a, a more like heavy kit. Um, this is probably the belt I'll wear with it. Have a dump pouch, single rifle pouch, one or two pistol at an angle, a tourniquet, got a safari land right there. And uh, this actually worked pretty well, but it's active retention with, with a flap. So Shaw did a little post on that. It was like, uh, it was like a week ago, got me thinking, which I hope it does for some of you guys. And then go and try stuff out. Try it out. It's good fun. Uh, Acro P2 versus RMR. Um, 
Acura P2 looks super cool. I'm really happy they've moved to a traditional battery. For those of you that don't know, Aimpoint announced two days ago, I think. Um, a new Acro that does not use their little tiny cylindrical battery that nobody uses for anything. Uh, they're swapping to a 2032, a standard RMR watch battery. Uh, super happy about that. They're boasting 50,000 hours of battery life. That's not actually true. Well, it is true. It's 50,000 hours of battery life on like setting seven, which you can't see. Um, if you jack it all the way to setting 11 or 12, like on an Aimpoint T2, I'm assuming the Acro will have something similar. The battery life drops to about a year. Uh, I get about a year of battery life on my T2s if I leave them on 11 or 12. Overcast days, I can see it on 10. Sunny days, I need it on 12 or 11. So I usually leave my T2s on all the way up, which does mean it kills the battery quicker. People don't understand that about Aimpoint. Aimpoint says 50,000 hours, 40,000 hours. But in the fine print, it goes on setting seven with temperature of 70 degrees, dry environment. So once you add in you know, 90 degrees, humidity, leaving it on on 11 or 12, not actually four years. Now, if you leave your optic off all the time, absolutely, you know, and you only turn it on when you need it, absolutely. Uh, but that's something a lot of people don't understand about aim points. Uh, but, it, but I'm glad the, the, the Acro P2, greatly updated, I'll be using them. I think they dropped the price point on them as well. Uh, they're a little more comparable to like RMRs. It's a good question. Why choose an RMR when you can choose an Acro P2 with good battery life, better battery life, uh, that you can switch the battery on without having to re-zero? That's a good question. The only reason I can see for wanting to stick to an RMR is the Acro is more mass, it is more weight, and that does translate into more recoil. Unless you're giant and huge and massive and can absorb it all, and you have huge banana finger hands. Um, an RMR will still, most likely for most people, shoot flatter than adding a bunch of weight on top. And the same goes for, I was shooting the Hollow Sun, what's it called? The boxy Hollow Sun, the 509T. The 509T, I was shooting that today on a Glock 34. I can feel the weight on top. Like it's just science and physics. Like I can feel that it is recoiling a little more than a tiny optic like an SRO or an RMR. Same goes for a Delta Point Pro. Delta Point Pro sits really high. It's fat, you're putting a bunch of weight up top. Physics, it's a little more recoil than an RMR. Um, so yeah, the P2 will have a little more. And I've shot with the T1 on a pistol. Remember those days? Way back in the day, and that was the only way to run an enclosed optic. That had a lot of recoil compared to an RMR. Um, so that's the only reason I can really see for not running one. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, do you have a setup for open carry? I don't open carry. Uh, if I did, I would run a Safari Land ALS on a belt and two pistol mags on my left side, and it would be black. Um, most people would see that and go, he's here on official business, I'm not going to give him any crap. Uh, if you wear camouflage or a bunch of crazy colors, they won't think that. And they'll probably ask more questions. Uh, but black Safari Land with double pistol pouch, it's pretty official looking, pretty professional. One take status. Uh, we are working on a bunch of stuff right now. Hopefully when that's done, we'll be able to get back to some normal content. But you'll like what we're working on. It's just a matter of getting that out of the way. So it is what it is. Uh, do you own any leather holsters? I do, actually. <laughs> I'm a FUD in disguise. I actually did buy two leather holsters. Um, can't remember who makes them. Um, for a weapon light, uh, believe it or not, Sunbreak. Because uh, I wanted to run some of my more traditional guns, um, like the high power and some other stuff. And the, we don't make holsters for all those. So I found this leather holster on eBay. It's made for a weapon light, and I can actually run a variety of pistols in there. CZ-75 with weapon light, uh, high power, without a weapon light, a bunch of different guns. It's kind of fun. I've used it like a couple times, uh, but I don't train with it a whole lot. So that is what's cool about leather. You can fit a lot of different guns. That is the advantage of a leather holster or even an nylon holster over Kydex, although I still don't, it's not a good enough reason to use those. Excuse me. Please do a video on the saw already. Look, if you haven't noticed, there's an ammo crisis right now, okay? I don't think the internet would be able to handle it. I'm actually not joking. Well... I'm half joking. If we did a one take with the saw and I burn a thousand rounds and do a barrel change, <laughs> do a suppressor change, uh, I don't think the internet will, I don't think people will be as accommodating to that video as they would have been two years ago. Now, to some extent, do I care? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I don't know. So it is something to consider. <laughs> so we'll see. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I know, I know. I know what you're thinking. Maybe, maybe not. 
what is the best option to secure the Kiwi Mags to Molly? The best option is mouse clips. Um, S-Tac sells these little Hypalon straps. I don't like them. They're good for some pouches. Um, but the standard uh, tactical tailor, I should have some around here. Standard tactical tailor mouse clips are uh, this plastic material that can fill the entire molly and prevent the whole pouch from sliding around. You definitely want to do that. And make sure you molly it right. You wouldn't believe how many people, real fast, I'm going to give a demo. Because some of you in here may not know. Molly. Molly is a system, PALS webbing, that was developed back in, um, I'd say it was the 90s, as a, a better way for soldiers in the military to attach equipment to their kit uh, over the ALA system, which used these plastic slash metal prongs, thingies, that you would slide into thingies and put the gear on you, right? So Molly and PALS utilizes an attachment interface on the pouch. You have the load-bearing gear, this lovely war belt from Sword. You run, run over, oh geez, this could actually be, because these are webbing and they're fat. Thank you, Charles. Webbing. You insert webbing into webbing on your, your desired piece of equipment. This is how you use Molly, right? I can't tell you how many guys that I've trained with, done stuff with, SF dudes, other folks from other organizations. Yeah, I'll move more of this out of the way. You can just say it. You can just say it, all right? This isn't super official. That haven't set up their pouches properly, and the whole thing's like wobbling around. So you go through the, the first row of webbing. You then scoop this back onto the pouch through its row, because this is all sewn to like interlace with the other material. Trust me, there's so many people that don't know how to do molly. They just send it all the way through and back and the whole pouch, like it, it stands out from the gear and wobbles around. And then you take your two webbings, you send them back in, and this gets really annoying on some gear, especially if they sew the molly with uh, poor tolerancing and it's tight and certain, like even these, like this one right here, this is a little too tight. They sewed this, it works, it's just, uh, there's no give. And that can be good. If there's no give, it means the rifle mag or your radio won't shift back and forth. So that can be good. So we run that through. This is just going to be on here permanently because, you know, I'm just putting it on. Actually, no, I'll have Josh take it off. Just kidding. I won't do that. <laughs> I'm about to use my teeth on this. So you pop that through. So if you all can see, I got going into the webbing out to the pouch, through the pouch, into the webbing, out to the pouch. It's like, uh, it's like you know, sewing or quilting. I'm sure some of you guys are expert quilters in here. Just absolute bosses, right? Uh, so now I'm done. So I go back onto the pouch into its, its webbing. Yeah, this, this really like crazy lighting makes this fun. It goes back through. You guys are probably bored stiff. But look, I'm doing this for the people in here that have never used Molly or don't know how Molly works. And then this one has these convenient, because this is all designed to work, well, I guess it's just the pouch. It has these little keepers here at the bottom of the pouch. You pull these up. It shows some Velcro here. The pull tabs ad adhere to that. You shut it. Wow, this is actually a nice little, little design they got going on here. And now this is firmly, and also, as you can see, flatly, set up to the belt. So there's no movement, the pouch won't move. This is one with the belt. That's how Molly was designed to work. But you wouldn't believe how many people don't know that and they don't do it right. And it's just like, are you lazy or you just not know? Because some people they just want to you know, throw it on, they don't care. So that rifle pouch is on the belt and uh, it's gonna stay. So that's Molly, right there, boom, all right. Alice clips. Look, I'm, I'm a young guy, but I've got Alice gear too. I have to, I go buy everything. Um, that's on the, yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh, what's a good word for that? Disappointment, I guess. Uh, it's a good word for that, for that video. Or just that, the whole like concept behind people being upset about citizens training and having a right to bear arms, you know, when, if you're upset about the Constitution, you know, or the Second Amendment, and then you use your military status to justify your upsetness for the Constitution you swore to uphold and defend, 
it kind of kind of says a lot. Um, pretty pretty wild. But anyway, um, do you guys make mag pouches? Yes, we have uh, Kydex Mars carriers for competition belts, regular belts. We don't do. You can put them on Molly. I don't recommend it. It takes up a lot of room on Molly. I recommend an actual like pouch, Molly pouch of some sort. Um, but yeah, uh, Molly. What do you think of alien gear? Funny you would ask me, uh, but I'm not gonna answer that. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I make I'm a holster company. All right, that's kind of. I mean, I guess I'm talking about other people's nylon. They're cheap. All right, I said it. Uh, <laughs> that's on backwards. No, it's not. You're wrong. Uh, well, I guess it's not upside down. It could be. Duct tape, you're not wrong. Uh, would you? Yeah, oh, I already did. Uh, will your med pouch? Yes, it will. Uh, yeah, we haven't had stock. Are you talking the fully kitted one? We've had some issues getting some of the stuff for North American Rescue, just quantity. Uh, certain dressings, I think because of a certain national disaster that occurred last year some of that stuff all of a sudden became hard to manufacture because they were taking that and turning it into masks um so we've been waiting on some stuff to restock the like the kitted and med ones on uh, the refill kits things like that we're just waiting but yeah no we actually like we actually we're, that's not going away it's just a matter of getting the stuff back one r one drill keep doing it or stop doing it do it do it if your reloads are fire and they're awesome here's what you should do start doing one reload four. Um, what this does is the problem with a one reload one, the biggest problem, and I know people just go out there and say it's bad without addressing how you fix the bad and where one on ones are good. One on ones are great as far as saving ammo, saving money, but getting the rep in of a reload, like the rep of a reload. In fact, it doesn't even have to be one R one. You could start bolt locked and literally just do this and load and not shoot. You could dry fire the whole thing. Now having, you know, starting to uh, sort of learn the impulse of the weapon, only having half the recoil, locking to the rear, and then you dump the magazine. Like that is part of reloading a rifle, so that's why a one R one exists. The problem with a one R one is there's no follow up shots after, so people get really lax on their recoil management, pistol or rifle. Usually it's more a pistol. They fire, they reload, and on this shot they have a really loose grip with this hand, and they just fire and just take what they got. And for only firing one shot, that works. It's fine. But if I got to dump five rounds, ten rounds of, of that magazine after my reload, I, I want my good grip. Like, I need my good grip to be able to control recoil and get good hits. Um, same with a rifle. You know, there's a... Uh, uh, grabbing the magwell after a 1R1. Stupidest thing I've ever seen. I don't want to be shooting ten rounds from here. Like, we don't magwell grip anymore. So even though it's really fast to fire one, reload, and go to the magwell... That does not set me up for success if I have to shoot more than one bullet. It's really flashy and fast for one shot, but it doesn't work for other drills and other things that you need to work on. So every once in a while, what I'll do, uh, we did this in, a, I think we did it in the class actually. We did our 1R1s, and I think we did a 1R5, uh, I believe. I could be wrong, um, but that's what I usually do, is I go straight from 1R1s into 1 reload 4. So it's 1 reload, good recoil control, 4 rounds. Uh, where it's actually testing your recoil control. Um, same with pistol. So, big deal. I'm sure there's some juicy comments after what I said. It's good fun. Uh, thoughts on the LBT 6094? Uh, LBT, they make some really good kit. I've had 6094s in the past. I don't know the differences between the new one, the, the V3, I guess. I don't know what version they're on. But uh, why no Sonstrico cans? We have Sonstricos. Uh, pistol, uh, subgun cans. I was running one today. I don't have rifle cans of theirs, but... Uh, what is the best choice for sling use, single or two? Two points. Um, more retention of the sling to your body. Um, I like attaching my sling, though, to the, uh, not on the stock, because when you start, you know, throwing the stock up over your shoulder, manipulating around things, that sling then drops behind your back, and then when you go to drive out, it catches, and you can't. So I attach my slings near the pistol grip, and that gives me full motion of the stock, um, and the, it's independent from the sling. The sling is still retained around my shoulder, uh, and I can still do all my stuff. I should do a sling video soon, but uh, two-point. I do two-point. Uh, bison belt. They're cool. Slicksters. I think they used to be better, uh, although I haven't used a new one back because we used to sell them, and then they changed some stuff and adjusting the shoulder. Their system for adjusting the shoulder pads, I'm going to say it, it sucks. You have to get a piece of plastic. You've got to go up underneath. It's not exposed. Like, I know why they did it. It, it looks cool. 
nothing's exposed and it's slick. Like I understand, but from an end user standpoint, you know, as you transition between what you're wearing and seasons and just setting up in general, having to go up inside the carrier with a little piece of plastic and undo the Velcro and, and drag it through and set it and put it on, oh, it didn't fit and do it, it sucks. Um, so we, so when they updated it, I was like, I'm not a big fan of this. Bison belt, pretty cool. Um, although the inner belt is really flimsy. And what I've learned in using two-piece belts and the inner belts, you need a belt that, an inner belt that is rigid enough to help support the weight. Uh, Cause that's the thing going through your belt loops that helps supports the weight of all the kit on the outer belt. If you have a flimsy inner belt, the entire thing is like falling off of you. Cause that is not through your belt loops. The outer belt's not through your belt loops. Um, so you wanna have a good inner belt that's got some rigidity to it that can help support the weight. So their inner belt is, again, in my honest assessment, because we have one, it's crap, it's too lightweight. What I would do is I would take their bison belt, I would go buy, the Ronin one is too stiff. You want one in the middle. Uh, but let's say a Ronin belt. I go get a Ronin inner to go with my bison outer and I'm done. It's rigid, it'll help support the weight, it'll be awesome. That's my opinion though. Um, just how it is. If you don't like it, that's okay. It's my opinion as a, as a human being. Um, you don't have to like it. Um, don't know anything about their belt, the GBRS belt. Uh, it looks like a, a uh, what's it called? What's the material called? A Tigris. It's a Tigris supported uh, nylon two-piece belt. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. It's probably gonna be pretty good. You're gonna be able to put your stuff on it, put it around your waist. Pretty cool. You know, I don't know what little things they're gonna add to it to make it different. Um, but modern two-piece belts that have stiffeners inside of them, that have a good buck, Cobra, you know, a Raptor style buckle in the front. I mean, they're all kind of the same. They just have little things to add to it. So it'll, it'll most likely be a good belt unless the people making it will have, oh, it's LBT. So yeah, it'll be a good belt. I think it's LBT. Uh, if you get one, I'm sure it'll work great. Uh, dead air cans. I have a K. I don't have any of the long ones. I have a K for a, it's actually on my, uh, one of my MCXs. It's great. Um, Sons of Liberty Gunworks. Don't have any of their guns. I've heard all sorts of things, good things, okay things. I don't have one. I don't have a lot to say. Um, I haven't tried to go and get one yet. Um, at some point I may. I did just buy a, uh, a Remington R5. <clears throat> some of y'all may know what that is. Um, so that's interesting. And we have a Rattler inbound that we'll play with. Um, uh, we're not running any promos right now. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. We do have a couple of promos. We have an L, uh, what do we have? Slings. So the sling I just showed, that's on sale right now. And uh, L210s, Drew, do we have L210s on sale right now? Yeah. Yeah, L210s. Yeah, so we don't have Memorial Day sales going on. These are sales that took effect, uh, started like last week, but they're still going. And slings are 20% off through the end of May. Slings are 20% off this month. Well, well, the end of May, which is in like, I don't know, five days. So yeah, for in, for the month of May, they're 20% off. So yeah, uh, if you need a good slang, you saw me talking about it. Um, yeah, go uh, go pick one up. They're super cheap. I have shot the LMT, yeah. Uh, I haven't shot it in the DI configuration or in the uh, piston configuration. They sent me the, the piston barrel setup and I also have the DI. Um, I was gonna try to shoot it today. I wasn't able to, had to shoot other guns. Shot like four other rifles instead. I can only shoot maximum, and that sounds weird, I can only shoot maximum like really three or four guns a week, uh, different types of like ARs and configurations. I've tried to take more than that to the range, like take out 10 and do videos of each, and it doesn't really work. So I'm really maxed at like three or four. And if you think about it, if I'm, you know, if I'm only able to do it say 40, 50 weeks out of the year, and I need to spend time on some of them more than others, that really means I can only shoot maybe a dozen to 20 different rifles a year and have like decent time on them. Um, I'm not going to be that, you know, YouTube shill who shoots a, and again, well, even them, let's, let's, numbers are great. Let's say a YouTube shill is paid to rep a different company every week. They can still only rep 50 ish companies a year. So 50 ish rifles a year. Uh, they're not doing that many. At least I hope they're not doing that many because that's a lot of shilling. But um, there are some limits as far as like testing gear and how much and how often and, you know, because there's just a lot out there. Uh, you got you to gotta pick. I've got guns here that I bought forever ago that I've only shot once or twice because I had to move on and shoot other stuff and work on other things. Uh, it's all time. Time is everything. Um, a cry ABS opinion. 
The cry, the larger cry plate carriers, the ABS, the CPC, if they still make it, I'm sure they still make it for some uh, units and stuff. Uh, those are what I would classify as uh, full kit or heavy uh, setups. They're great for su supporting weight. I've talked to guys, so obviously what you have, I don't even have, a f my JPC is sort of configured as one, but you have your, you know, your slick style vests, right? So this is an AC1, which, and this is, in my opinion, this is, it's not full slick. This is like in the middle, right? Where the most this carrier is really going to support or really should support is like mags on the front, stuff on the sides. That's really it. I'm not going to layer it with a ton of weight for how this plate carrier is created with its pad system, its support system, you know, whatever it has. Like the CPC and the AVS, they have all kinds of stiffeners and su supports built into the carrier and pads built into the carrier to support weight. Um, that's why I've talked to guys who are like, yeah, these slick vests are great for, you know, less equipment, low vis, putting in bags. Uh, you wear it for, you know, a few days, whatever. But if we have to haul around, you know, two full size radios, all of our batteries, uh, plus water, uh, plus three mags on the front, two mags on the bottom, uh, extra ammunition in the back, uh, plus our pistol mags, plus our flashlights, plus our headlamps, you know, at that point you're starting to need a, a different kind of a plate carrier for a different kind of emission set. And that's not what these are for. It's not what these were ever intended for. These were slick arm, slick vests. They were for a, a minimal amount of kit. Really all you need to run in real quick and do some stuff and you know, then take it off or hide it, put it in a bag and that kind of thing. Um, so I'd actually like to get a full build CPC with everything on it, you know, possibly run two different radios on it. Also have all my water, have all my mags, have all my stuff and actually build that out into probably a 30 pound vest. Uh, I've started building a more heavy sort of a loadout with my uh, JPC which the JPC, now the benefit of the slick vests is they are easier to, to scale, uh, but my JPC 2.0, I've got the standard front flap that goes here in the front that holds some mags, uh, good retention of course. I actually have my uh, groin protector, I think it's a first spear, so it's got 3A in it. I do have an upside down mag here with an open top, kind of playing with it. I'd probably swap it out to a flat pouch. Uh, and then on the side, I have an upside down water bottle thingy so I can access my water, drink, you know, put it away. Uh, and then on the back, I have their zip on, like, I don't, I don't even know what they call this. Bunch of pouches for crap um, on the back. So this thing, it's not supported like an AVS, but it will take the weight a little better the, uh, than like an AC1 or a Slickster or a fall in the blank little, you know, low vis, like slick carrier. Uh, the cummerbund is a skeletal cummerbund with Tigris reinforcements going through it. So shoulder pads are a little more beefy. It's got a, a pull away system. Um, so a little, little more beefy as far as, you know, supporting the weight, but this is still not an AVS. Um, there's a time and a place for the slick vests, like the AC1, the Slickster, the Spiritus, the whatever, and the Spiritus is, in my opinion, the overt and the covert are still kind of in that slick category. You know, you're not going to pile it up with like 30, 40 pounds of weight for the design of what it is. Same goes for the AC-1. I want an AVS for that, something that has built-in supports. Uh, and I'm going to build out one of those at some point. No, I don't go to YouTube shoots, no. Um, I don't, I don't, I, we don't do that here. Um, I, I don't want to stand on a line. I would, I'll, I'll take that back. I would go to network and talk to people. Like that is the reason you go to those events. You do not go to an event like that to have a awesome training experience or shooting experience because you're just on a line all shooting guns. Uh, that bores me to death. Uh, from a networking perspective and meeting people and saying hi and talking to folks about stuff, different story. But from a shooting perspective, shooting events are not shooting events. They're hangout events with guns. They're not actually like shooting events, like actual training events. They're not. Like, just like putting that out there. It's fine, guns, you know, if, you know, if that's your thing, standing on a line, shooting with no conditions, but they're not fun for me, ever. Uh, when are you releasing the rain holster? That is the real question. Don't know, actually I have no idea when. Uh, Velocity Systems, yes. So I've been using the Velocity Systems chest rigs. Uh, we're actually playing with them today. We have three of them. Um, and this is the one that I, let's take that off. They're awesome. They hold a bunch of stuff. I'm having some, there we go. The focus was off. 
Uh, what I like about the Mayflower Velocity Chest Rigs, this is a more traditional kind of a chest rig out there. And I know the thing right now is small micro rigs, little rigs, little setups and stuff like that. We sell uh, the SAC placard that can be built into a chest rig, although it's designed more around putting on a plate carrier with Kydex inserts. Um, but if I, you know, if I need more kit on me and maybe I'm not wearing a plate carrier, something like this is awesome. Uh, the thing about the Mayflower that I actually really like is it's not super wide, you know, it's not huge all the way back to here, although it's not necessarily a problem. Uh, but it gives me a lot of pouches in a pretty minimal amount of space and it's a one and done. You go to their site, you buy this, or you buy it on eBay, which is where I usually buy them. I get it within like, you know, five days because it's eBay and it's there and it's in stock and I won't get optics planted. Um, but I go to, you know, I go and I buy this and when I get it, it's done. It's got its harness, it's got its, all of its straps, it's got all of its pouches built in. There's no modification, really, uh, that's needed. I don't have to rip pouches off, don't have to do anything. And what this one gives me is two, let's see, accessory little pouch here for a flashlight right now, accessory pouch over here with a knife, two pouches in the front. I have a extended Glock 17 mag. I have, that's a Sharpie, but normally I can put anything in there I want, Snickers bar, I don't care. Two GP pouches on the front. This one has a right in the rain, a big American flag patch, which if I need to slap that on, I got it. Uh, Kim light thingy, another Sharpie, because oh, I guess I forgot I had that. Electrical tape and a compass. Boink, got that. This one has uh, GPS, more electrical tape, or maybe there's no electrical tape there. Uh, some lithium batteries for my night vision, uh, 3A or whatever 31s run on, uh, in pan, uh, the battery pack, uh, it's, uh, double A's, double A's. Uh, four rifle magazines, radio goes here, water bottle goes right here. So I have a way to have some waters or whatever I want, and I'm done. Uh, tourniquet on the bottom with uh, two of our little sling retainers, and I can do other tourniquets here on the side uh, with our little uh, cat tourniquet holders. Uh, so this is a one and done. I, I really like, like, there's a time and a place for modular, but sometimes it goes too far, where you are layering so many layers of Velcro and zippers and stuff to make it work that now it's bulky and huge and you've deviated from the original purpose of modular. I just like the simplicity of this. I have the pouches I need to do my stuffs. It's not the fastest, slickest, coolest rig in the world, but if I need to carry radio, water, GP type stuff, um, on the inside here I have a trash bag I have a video coming up on Instagram as to why I have that there. You'll see. But I have that on the inside. There's an admin pouch here for maps. Um, but I really like one and done rigs. I'm sure that's something T-Rex will be doing more in the future where it's not super modular. It's just thing for holding stuffs. Buy it. They also end up being cheaper. This is like $200. If I were to build this out with like a modular system, this would be more like $400. You know, pouches that go on the side, pouches that go on the front, a flat pouch, a zipper pouch, a harness thing. Then you add this and you add that and you're like 300, 400 bucks. But this guy right here, one and done, I'm set. I love it. I think it's great. I've had this for a while, but I've only just started recently really diving into it. It's kind of coming full, not full circle, but kind of recognizing some of the deficiencies of modular gear. Mayflower slash Velocity, they had a merger, same company. This is an older, I think this one says, uh, this one says, oh no, it does say Velocity. So never mind. I thought it was an older one. America's not dead yet. Um, it will if you, it will be if you do nothing. Um, how do you guys usually build out plate carriers? I need ideas. So it's pretty simple. So the way, again, it kind of goes back to what I was just talking about. You have, here's how I classify it. You got big carriers over here big direct action, supported, you know, load-bearing plate carriers that can fit your, all your breaching charges, your extra radios, your water, all your ammo, your extra ammo, your, your medical, your medical for your buddies, your batteries, your food, uh, food for like one meal, whatever. And then you have your, your three-day pack or whatever. You have that over here. You then have like sort of medium loadout where you have your medical, uh, some water most likely, uh, the magazines you need for your weapons, a couple other little things. Oh, your radio, of course, uh, you know, your multi-tool, your flashlight to batteries, and that's it. You kind of got the middle thing. And then you have slick, and slick is like, you got nothing, right? Slick is like this guy right here, which this, <laughs> speaking of Mayflower, uh, I picked up two of these on eBay now. This is an old school slick. Um, you're supposed to like wear this under a shirt, hence why it's like white. Uh, this is no kit at all, no gear, just armor. The purpose of this is just to give you, 
you know, rifle plates to protect your bode. Um, that's all this is for. No load bearing capability, no kit. Look at these little straps, they're tiny, they won't print through a shirt. Um, I was using this a little more like on top of my shirt. I have a radio pouch here, so I do have my communication, and then a uh, tourniquet on this side, because tourniquets are important. Uh, that's it, you know, so you got full slick, you got your, like, you know, your direct action, you know, supported load bearing, so your medium, you know, medium, you know, some mags, three, four rifle mags, some stuff, and then you have your full slick, uh, like this one right here. So what I'd recommend for the majority of people, doing something like this will work for, most likely work for most stuff. I can take this carrier, I can convert it into a slick carrier. Not as slick as that one, well, in some ways more, some ways less, uh, but I also can have three mags, my radio, medical, tourniquet, got a balaclava, multi-tool, I've got a strobe strobe on the back, uh, and I'm done. So this isn't like a full loadout. Oh, and I have this little dump pouch right here. Um, it's in the middle. And I think the middle is, is will work for uh, kind of the majority of folks out there, you know, citizens who aren't going on, you know, month-long, you know, missions and crazy stuff. Uh, and then slick is also something that's very important, especially as things get a little crazier. Um, potentially here in America, and maybe you need to wear some armor without it being super visible, uh, have a little bit of gear. Uh, we filmed some videos today of some sort of covert um, bag stuff and low-vis stuff, you know, normal-looking stuff. Uh, so if you don't follow us on Instagram, you're not going to see that because we don't put it on YouTube. That's the stuff we just publish every week because that's what we do. Um, um, separate GPS system? Yes, yes. Uh, I don't know if I said that or someone else. Uh, why is it becoming a trend to not wear side plates to your body armor? Uh, a lot of guys I've talked to have just seen it as for what you're giving up with weight, it's not really worth it. Um, so they just focus on the front plates and they just, you know, your arms are kind of here at your sides anyway, hopefully to <laughs> absorb some of the load. Um, so a lot of guys ditch side armor. But I have some side plates. I'm building out a heavy rig partially to kind of, you know, talk about like, hey, this is a full heavy plate carrier, you know, set up with all this stuff. Uh, training with it, if you have side plates, you can still get to your pistol, you can still do your stuff, uh, even with the extra bulk and weight. More of like a demonstration thing. I wouldn't use side plates. I would still run my little medium slick armor thing, but anyway. Uh, Agolite, don't know anything about their plate carriers. I do want to show something, especially on plate carriers, right? So talking, you got your big fat load-bearing direct action plate carriers, you're, you're sort of middle of the road, you kind of do some kit in your low vis, your slicks. So uh, this is, uh, again, I love talking about eBay, not the corporation itself, uh, but the ability to go on there, shop around, it's like flea market in Tarkov, see something you like, you buy it. Uh, this is a old issue, early GWAT. I wanna say it's Marines, I'd have to go double check. Uh, plate carrier, it's $140. It is large. And this is designed around being a more load bearing weight plate carrier. So this is more over here where like you would load this up with all your stuff and all your weight. It's big, it's got fat shoulder pads. Um, it's got a large cummerbund to take all of the weight. As you can see, there's a lot of molly on it. Um, it's got a full maritime pull the thingy and the whole thing falls off of you. Great if you're being medic uh, and you're all shot up uh, or if you're going into the water. Um, so I pick this up, there's a ton of them up there on uh, eBay for pretty cheap if you absolutely need a plate carrier to put plates into. Um, it has molly on it so you can slap stuff on it. Um, I'm gonna do some stuff with this, possibly use some of these khaki pouches I just got from Sword, throw it on here. This thing is big, it really sucks because you know it's just huge, but it's not like it gives you more protection because it'll take your normal sappy plates that go in that AC1, but it goes in here, but it's just bigger. It's more fabric, more excess webbing. That's just how it is. Uh, made by Eagle, so, you know, uh, quality, quality carrier that is uh, traditional. Some of you guys on here have probably used these and hate them or love them, one of the two. But large carrier for supporting weight. Kind of fun. We're going to build it out. And that takes side plates and armor and 3A and all that good stuff. So, anyway. With all that said, guys, again, I just need to do more Q&As to cover equipment because the questions, there's always questions. We can never get to all of them. It's unfortunate. So we probably need to do like four or five of these in a row to try to hit a bunch of questions, especially with new products coming out, new kit coming out, uh, kit not being available. What do you do? What do you buy on eBay? Do you look on eBay? 
Are there scammers on eBay? Yeah, there are, but there's ways of bypassing some of that if you know what you're looking for and you kind of look around. Um, so it's, uh, it's good fun. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. I don't think I'm doing a Twitch Armory stream right after this. I don't think I can. There's some meetings and some stuff that needs to happen. I may be streaming later tonight on Twitch. I can, again, cover more questions there on Kit. What I've actually been doing, I'll put this out there right here. Uh, I had some guys on my, my stream uh, last week who said, hey, I need a mount for my rifle uh, that does this, goes to the barrel. So I literally, on my second monitor, type in, because I already know what it is, drag it over, show them exactly what they should get. Um, so I'm helping people shop around. I even saw one of these Mayflower rigs on eBay for 160 bucks, pulled it up on my stream, it's like three weeks ago, said, one of you should buy this rig. Nobody did, so I bought it. Um, so we do some shopping on Twitch as well for kit and gear. Um, so if you have further questions or actually want a straight up recommendation, uh, definitely hit up my stream when I'm streaming, whenever that is, uh, whether it's later tonight or at least uh, Friday. I should be on a Friday and we will, we will try to help you guys out with actually showing you some stuff. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll try to answer more of your questions next time.